Hello and welcome to Share Talk. I'm Matt Brown. Thank you very much for joining us today. I am joined by David Galen, who is Chief Operating and Chief Financial Officer of Zinc Media. Thank you very much for coming on to the show today. Thanks, Matt. Great to be here. Well, let's start off. Zinc Media, who are you? What do you do? Where do you operate? And more importantly, how do you make your money? We are a TV production company based uh, in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, we specialise in factual TV production. Um, that means a lot of different things. Um, we make programming that spans the range from daytime TV all the way up to sort of very high-end uh, landmark documentaries. Uh, we have five different TV brands within our company. Uh, we're one of the largest uh, indies, as they're known, in the UK market, uh, and our strategy uh, is very much to sort of consolidate the market and, and, and hoover up some of the smaller indies uh, to become what's known as a super indie. Um, we've just made quite a big acquisition for us uh, of a company called Turn Television, which is based in Scotland. Okay. Um, you mentioned Turn and that acquisition. You've announced that to, to the market. And I think a lot of investors and viewers are, are, are probably asking what that acquisition means for, for Zinc Media and um, where, how you can actually change that company and what, what that company brings to your portfolio. Sure. Well, we're obviously very excited to have made the acquisition. Uh, Turn Television is based up in Scotland. It's mm -hmm. got three offices, one in Glasgow, one in Aberdeen, and actually one in Northern Ireland in Belfast. Um, it specialises in factual, so it's very much sort of us sticking to our knitting in terms of what we do well. Um, Scotland uh, and Northern Ireland is actually really important to us. There's a big push. Uh, in UK broadcasting to, to push TV production out into the regions. Mm -hmm. In fact, BBC uh, committed to spend an extra £20 million a year on broadcasting in Scotland, uh, sorry, on TV production in Scotland. Um, so having the ability to produce uh, quality factual programming um, in the nations uh, is really important to us, and, and quite apart from the fact that they make great programmes and they're a really good team. Understood. And, and just looking at turn, um, their turnover has been quite impressive. We're looking at £5 million a year. Um, I've got numbers here, but profit has been running about 300000 bottom line profit. Do you feel, or investors are asking, have you overpaid for, for turn? And, and at £300,000 per year, will you need to grow that profit to, to make a return on your investment? I think there's a couple of elements to that question. Um, the 300k um, profit, that is a bottom line profit. Mm -hmm. uh, the metric which we very much uh, judge ourselves and look at acquisitions by uh, is EBITDA, and their EBITDA is a little bit higher mm -hmm. uh, than that 300,000. Um, secondly, the way we've structured the acquisition, uh, there's an element that's paid up front, uh, and there's an element that's paid over three years on an earn out. Um, that earnout is based on EBITDA targets each year, um, and the EBITDA targets are higher than the 300. Gotcha. Um, so we would very much expect that that 300 grows each year, um, which means then that the price of a deal looks very different. Uh, and if they don't perform, of course, we don't end up paying the full price. Super. And just moving away um, to another part of your portfolio, and I, b I believe it's uh, Blakeway North. Um, it's had a, a BAFTA nomination for one of its um, children's documentaries. I believe this, would I be right in saying this isn't the first BAFTA nomination for, for your stable, is, is that correct? Correct. We've actually, we've had six BAFTA nominations uh, in the last three years. Um, so, you know, it's testament to the quality of the programming. Uh, that we're regularly nominated and recognised by BAFTA. Mm -hmm. um, it's great for the business, it's great for the teams that work on those programmes, um, and in industry recognition obviously is a great way to get commissioned on new programmes. So we're really happy um, to get that uh, recognition and hope that we get plenty more in the future. Understood. And for shareholders and achieving value for shareholders, what's the plan now, obviously with the turn acquisition, that's done, are you looking at other acquisitions or are you looking to, at the moment with your portfolio to boost the revenue within that portfolio rather than go hunting for, for other production companies? 
The answer is that it's a bit of both in reality. Uh, there's plenty of work we've got to do internally um, to improve our margins. Uh, we actually reported our results uh, a few weeks ago, and it was actually the first time that we turned a profit at EBITDA level mm -hmm. uh, in seven years. Um, so we're starting to produce um, better results financially. Um, that will continue to improve. Um, so there's a lot of sort of self-help we can do. Uh, without looking outside. Uh, however, we do want to make more acquisitions. Uh, we think that um, there's, uh, there's a really strong argument to consolidate um, the, the, what is a very fragmented TV production market. Uh, we're also still quite small for a name uh, company, um, and we want to grow our market cap. Um, and we believe uh, you know, value, uh, value will come as we grow. Um, and certainly our profitability um, should increase significantly. Super. Um, and we were talking off air about, about the history of the company and Zinc Media, and, and you mentioned you moved away from print, and obviously we, we've seen how print has changed and really isn't the media medium to be in, involved in, and certainly digital video um, it is the way forward. So you've obviously got your ear to the ground in, in, in how the market's moving. And, and it does feel, over, over the recent years, with the likes of Netflix and Amazon, and, and the structure is changing um, within television. Certainly, we, we look at revenue streams coming from uh, advertisers when you look at ITV, and, and, and maybe certain problems for them at the moment and, and going forward. With that environment changing, how are you positioned as company to, to benefit from, from these changes? So starting, starting at the sort of beginning of your question about mm -hmm. the move away from print publishing, uh, I think it's, uh, it's not underestimated how difficult the restructuring that we did in our business over the last couple of years was. Um, when I started in January 2016, the print publishing side of the business was actually bigger than the TV mm -hmm. uh, division. Um, we've actually exited from predominantly, um, from pretty much all of the publishing businesses to focus on TV, which is where we think the growth is. Um, TV market has changed massively in the last few years. Um, you know, a few years ago it was BBC, ITV, etc., mm -hmm. Channel 4. Um, who were the buyers in the market. Now, today, there are many more buyers, and some of those buyers are incredibly large. Mm -hmm. Netflix, Amazon, uh, I read a stat a couple of days ago. Netflix spent something like £7.6 billion pounds on content last year. That's incredible, um, you know, isn't it? Huge uh, numbers. Absolutely incredible. So, yeah. so we're not bound anymore to go to the traditional UK broadcasters um, only. Uh, and in fact, we're making good progress at approaching those international broadcasters and platforms. Uh, in the last year, we've made programming for National Geographic, mm -hmm. uh, HBO, Smithsonian. Um, we're starting to look at Netflix. Um, so there's plenty of room in the market um, for good content makers. Um, you know, the, uh, the expression content is king has never sort of been more true than now. Fantastic. Well, uh, on that note, thank you very much for providing us with some content on Share Talk today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you, David. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Matt.